So we're, we're talking about the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to go back and, and reteach everything, but I, I want to go through a few points. And if you weren't here on Wednesday, I just want to cover a little bit of territory. But my goal over the next month or so is to draw you in closer to walk with God, the Holy Spirit, that you understand him. So get your Bible. Let's go to John chapter 16, verse 7, and let's look what the word has to say. Jesus is speaking here, and let's read it together loud and corporately and with lots of authority. You ready? Say, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient, which means profitable, for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Will you put your Bible down, grab the person's hand next to you, and let's just pray. That God would just open your eyes and your ears to hear that today would be a supernatural day. That over the next six weeks or so, you would draw closer and closer to the Holy Spirit. That God wants an intimate, intimate walk with you. He has every answer. He's the revelator. He's the comforter. He, he wants to reveal himself in dynamics and ways that you've not known him. So, Father, I ask that you open the ears of every hearer and that you just release an open heaven. Let angels show up. I pray supernatural miracles, signs, and wonders. I thank you for every person that is under the sound of my voice and that is watching by the Internet, that you would do what only you can do, not by might and not by power, but in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Turn around, slap somebody a high five. Say, God wants to speak to you. Just let them know. Say, God wants to speak to you. So when we begin to look at this, the person, the gifts, the ministries of the Holy Spirit are revealed and function with the greatest accuracy through people who know him and know them. So the, God, the Holy Spirit, is not a figment of man's imagination. He's not an it. He's not a thing. He's God. Say he's God. So if God, the Holy Spirit, is to function fully in our lives. We must have an open heart. We must have a consuming desire to know him. It's just like when, when you uh, start to date, you want to get to know that person. What do you like? What's your favorite color? Blue. Mine is too. We must be meant for each other. All right? You want to get to know them. I mean, you, you, so God, the Holy Spirit, wants you to know him and, and know his nature, know what he does, who he is. You see here Jesus is, and I think it'd be pretty cool to hang out with Jesus, and Jesus gives a promise and said, it's expedient, and the word expedient means it's profitable. It's for your benefit that I go, so that the Holy Spirit, the comforter, may come. Jesus said, I can't be with you always, but there is one who will never leave your side. It might be your deepest, darkest hour. You might be in a very place that we call a valley of a shadow of death, but know that you are never alone. That God, the Holy Spirit, is with you. And I'm going to show you that all throughout Scripture, that he never leaves your side. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Thank God for God, the Holy Spirit. You'll understand God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit, he says, I'm a comforter. The Greek word is parakletos. We'll study that a lot more extensively. But parakletos means an advocate. It's an intercessor, a consoler. It means one who is called to aid to comfort, and to counsel. So he aids you, he comforts you, he counsels you. It literally means it's used in a court of justice to denote a legal assistance, a counsel for the defense, an advocate. You see, I was praying, and when I pray, and I start feeling really passionate about something where the enemy has come to just literally kill, steal, and destroy something that I love. I and mean, I know how to go in deep because I've got the best defense counsel. I have the Holy Spirit, and that's what the Bible says. That's why Isaiah, God says, plead your case, your cause before me. You have to understand the courts of heaven and that your legal counsel here on earth is God, the Holy Spirit. He is your legal defendant, and so he's one who has summoned one's pleads of another's case before a judge or before a helper because God is the judge. He's a God of justice. But the Holy Spirit is God, your defender, defender of a patron, one who speaks for and suggests to him what to say. You see, this month as we examine the Holy Spirit, we're going to examine who he is and what is the power of Pentecost. So through scriptures, we, re we receive the knowledge that we couldn't receive any other way. Why? Because his will is his word. Amen. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So his will is his word. And one of the most important revelations in the Bible is the nature of God. 
Now, we broke a lot of this down, and I'm just going to give you a summary of it in about five minutes, and we're literally going to be out here by 1230. God is in the miracle-working business. Amen? So what happens, the Bible unfolds a mystery that God is both one and yet more than one. He is three persons in one. It is what we call the Trinity. The most important thing we'll get to in a moment. See, the three persons revealed in Scripture are God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, it's pretty easy for us to grasp God the Father, God the Son, because they're parallels to our humanism. So we understand what it is to have a father. That's why some of us have uh, jacked up mentalities and struggle with God the Father, because we didn't have good natural daddies. And then God the Son, many of us have children, so we understand, but not too many people have a ghost. At least I hope you don't have a ghost. <laughs> not too many people have, like, a, a, a spirit. So it's, it's more difficult in our human comprehension to understand God the Holy Spirit. But he is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. One of the most profound and distinctive revelations in the Bible is that of the person and the work of the Holy Spirit. The first thing that we understand is that the Holy Spirit, he himself is a person as much as the Father, as much as the Son. He's not diminished like he, he, he's just um, God the Holy Ghost, like the Holy Spirit. We learned and we studied and I laid it out in a clear case that God fills heaven and earth. There is no place that God is not. Through the Holy Spirit, God knows everything. There is nothing hidden from him. God, the Holy Spirit, he is present everywhere. We use theological terms like omnipresent, omniscient, which literally just means God, the Holy Spirit, all places at all times. You see it unfolded in scripture like Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 23 and through 24 says, Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see him, declares the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. So if God fills heaven and earth, there's no place God is not. There's no place where things happen that God doesn't know about. And then I'll read it just for the sake of you really grabbing it. Psalm 139, verse 1 through 12. It says, Oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways, my course, my chosen path. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely. Think about that. Before you speak it, God knows it. He says, you hem me in behind and before. Now, let me just stop there because I, I use this scripture a lot personally. Because God says, I'm familiar with your ways. I knew everything you'd do before you ever did it. I know your thoughts before you even thought it. I know your words before you even speak them. He says, and I've hemmed you in, in front and behind. You see what comfort it is to know that I am hemmed in by God. To him is like to so he has stitched me in. Oh, don't make me start preaching right there. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty to obtain. And this is the key verse, verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? And he keeps going, if I go up to heaven or if I make my beds in the depth of hell, there's nowhere I can escape you. You are there. Your hand will guide me. He said, surely I'll say, he goes in verse 11, if I say surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. You see, that's why I said you may be in a dark place, but it's not dark to God. God is there with you, the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Spirit. And if you can begin to cultivate and understand that, it's going to radically transform your life. So God's presence permeates the entire universe. There's nowhere that you can go that will be hidden from God. No distance can separate you from him. Isn't that wonderful? No devil can block you from him. God is everywhere. Throughout the entire universe, he knows all that is happening everywhere, every day. And the key that unlocks this is in verse 7. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? You see, we begin to understand Psalm 33, verse 6 says, By the word of the Lord, the heavens are made, and by the breath of his mouth, all their host. Or the English translates breath. The Hebrew can also mean spirit. So the word change would read it like this. By the word of the Lord, the heavens were made. And by the spirit of his mouth, all of the host. In other words, 
the two great agents of creation that brought the entire universe into being were the word of the Lord. Remember, God doesn't separate himself from his word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, John chapter 1. Amen? So it was the word of the Lord and the spirit of God are the Holy Spirit. So if we go all the way back to Genesis, we see in the very beginning, the Holy Spirit has always been here. So if you look, because a lot of people came through like maybe word of faith or we know the, the power of words and life and, and that they contain life and death, right? And so we think, well, if we speak it, it'll come to pass. So if we decree a thing and declare a thing, it shall be established. And that's truth, but it's partial truth. And what do you mean that? Because you've got to take the word in total context. You've pleaded a lot of promises that you haven't seen come to pass. So what happened? The earth is void. And it's dark, which means it's empty. It's without form. It's not producing. And so Satan had been cast. The earth was destroyed. And then it says the spirit of God moved. Let's read it in scripture. It says in verse 2 and 3 in Genesis 1. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. King James says the Spirit of God moved. And God said, what? Let there be light, and there was light. So when the Spirit of God and the Word of God was there, there was a new thing. In this case, it happened to be light. So here's the, here's the principle. Before you start just speaking, you have to have a move of the Spirit, which means you have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. You see, no man can even call Jesus Christ Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There's no way you can even recognize. Let me tell you how to pray for your children, how to pray for your lost loved ones. Because often we're just saying, God save them, God save them. And we'll pray that the Holy Spirit go to them, visit them, and remove every scale from their eyes. And that every veil would be removed. That they would know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Lord and he is Savior. You see, the Bible, and I'll teach you more later, but the Holy Spirit is one who brings all things to remembrance. He is the revealer. He is the teacher. He is the one that carries out, and we'll, we'll, we'll help you understand that. I want you to get close to God. I want you to draw really, really close. Because in, in Christianity, listen, there, there's a lot of things. I told this earlier. There's a difference between principle and preferences, Right? So you can't mess up principles. They're laws, fundamental things that the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, Psalm 11, 6, the foundation be destroyed, what then shall the righteous do? So if foundations, fundamentals get destroyed, there's nothing to build upon. So you have to have a foundation. So we recognize, uh, Pastor Doug, if you'll get up here, I used you earlier. So I, I got saved. I was uh, in, a, in a person's home. Then I went, landed up in a little Nazarene church, and I was in a church of God. Now, some of y'all acting like you've never been in church in your life, all right? And uh, in church of God, like, we we supposed to not uh, cut our hair, supposed to, you know, not wear makeup, amen. Some of y'all, some of y'all like, oh, I, y'all know you from old school, right? I certainly shouldn't have a dress up here, all right? Anyway, so in church of God, assemblies of God, what are you doing? <laughs> he goes, assemblies of God split off a church of God and they did it over an issue called sanctification because the assemblies of God now there are mega churches even in the central Florida area that not within our lifetime had massive splits over this because the assemblies of God said you can dance when well, church of God we couldn't do anything or you aren't hearing what I'm saying Doug you should have been in the church of God I'm telling you he should not have been in the assembly so so they could dance. So they were doing Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Come on, I don't act like you weren't doing Jehovah Jireh. Y'all danced to Jehovah Jireh, right? My provider. So they could dance. We couldn't. Now, that, now, in reality, that's a preference. That's not a principle. Do you think it's a heaven and hell issue over whether you dance or not? No. If you want to dance in church, dance. Amen? If you don't, don't. It's not a heaven and hell issue. Thank you, Pastor Doug, since you can't dance. Praise the Lord. I'm just messing with him. So, so th th there have been a lot of church splits. There's been a lot of doctrinal differences over things that are really preferences. All right? There, but there's something you cannot mess up as a Christian. There's something you've got to understand very, very, very clearly. Now, we all go, don't mess up Jesus. Yeah, that's true. But that's, again, partial truth. 
You know what you cannot mess up? The Trinity. Because God is three in one. So you